we last left off, you guys were at Jamboree Hill, having a great time, sliding down, you know, having the time of your life for the first snowfall of the year. Everything was great. You heard there was going to be a fire started down by the creek. You went down to the creek. You seen a couple people there from your class, a couple other older teenagers hanging out, probably waiting for more of a crowd to form. And then Camila comes by, returns with her wood pile uh, that she gathered in preparation for the fire, and then was totally distraught that she lost her bracelet. That was a last thing, well, one of the main things she was given from her deceased mother, so it means a lot to her. You all decided to join and help her backtrack, try to find the bracelet with no luck, but you came across a horrific scene, I guess you could say. Uh, you see a trail of crimson, uh, must be blood in the snow, along with two sets of footprints. Camila seemed rather distraught by this sight and kind of panicked and took off and said she'll go get help. The remaining four of you, always finding your way into trouble, <laughs> uh, decided to follow the trail. You did so, and you went for a minute or so until you came across the body of one Henry Crouch, a classmate of yours, um, motionless in the snow, eyes open, staring up at the canopy above. Tyler went in to investigate with his limited first aid skills, but he was pretty confident that he is dead, despite still the blood just pouring out of his leg. And Gadget decided to pull out something from his bag to help with the situation, but unfortunately fumbled and dropped all of his supplies and just finished cleaning all that up. Izzy went looking for a big hefty stick uh, to protect everyone, but wasn't lucky enough to find one right now, immediately around her, and instead she has a tiny little twig <laughs> that uh, could just whip somebody, I guess, and not really do any damage. But an and crystal back was I remember saying you were totally frightened by the situation and you backed up and that's why I have your token back a little further than the rest yes <clears throat> so and Tyler you went to investigate the lag wound in more detail and when you did well you roll a failure with a complication so you're as you were distracting try distracted trying to look at that suddenly this kid, who you firmly believe to be dead, his eyes shifted, and with a thrust, his hand came up and grabbed you with a vigorous grip around your neck, immediately gagging and choking you. And everyone rolled for stress, and everyone failed. That obviously caused stress to everyone in the area. And so you're essentially grappled. Tyler, I didn't do damage, but you're grappled. Um, oh, okay. And that's where we're going to pick up. All right, so we just rolled initiative, and first up is Izzy. So you are within a near distance to the two over here. Uh, so these two, how it works, these two are in close proximity with each other. You're at near, and uh, Crystal, you're at double near, which is basically like 60 feet away. And Izzy okay. and Gadget are 30, essentially, if you want to think of it that way. Oh, I guess I could share the combat actions thing again, now that we're actually in combat. I'd like to move closer to Tyler, and my goal is to try and help him out in some way. Like, I'm not very strong, but like, if I can either get him something that I think will help him, or if I can like help be like a counterweight to pull against this thing, but I'm not touching him yet. All right, so you're- You see, he has a different plan. Your first action, you want to move up to yeah. basically be be in the area with them. Okay, and now your second action. Um, so how do you want to do this? Do you want to attack? Do you want to try to like grapple and use your strength to try to pull, pull away? Um, or what's your plan? I'd like to kind of be there to like help Tyler pull away if that's what he's trying to do. Like an extra weight of a kid against another kid should be a pretty big bonus. 
Do you want But I don't want to pull on him because he's got him by the neck, right? So I don't want to like hurt his neck. But I want to be like ready to pull back on him if he's looking for my help. Like if he reaches back for me, I'll pull with him. So you essentially want to get in position, you want to assist Tyler with trying to break free on his turn. So whatever he's doing on his turn, you're gonna try to help him out. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, I get it. Sounds yeah. good. Because one thing I'll just sort of mention, just as a reminder, we all, as middle schoolers, have the danger magnet thing. So that means if any of us take an action to help another person, we get advantage on that check, especially if it's something that would cause the other person to be hurt. Indeed. Yeah. That's what keeps 13-year-olds alive in this. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the teenagers. <laughs> um, next up is Henry. As you, Tyler, you now suddenly you're, you snap back and you're looking at what grabbed you in the throat and you are looking into Henry's eyes. They're bloodshot red and they have this bizarre look to them. They, they look normal and natural other than being bloodshot, but it's just, there's just this glaze over them that you is kind of sickening to look at. And his first action will be his cold hand wrapped around your throat. He already previously had you grappled, and it's firm. He pulls you in at a tremendous speed at the same time as he thrusts his head forward. He's pulling you into a headbutt. And I'm going to say, since you are grappled, you will not get to evade. Okay. So... Um, he's gonna have a standard test, it's just you won't get to evade. Okay. <clears throat> so, that is a success. So, he, you guys all see, and Izzy, just as you're running up and you kind of like get in position to try to help Tyler with whatever he's gonna do, you just see him get pulled in and a sickening crack and blood sprays out of Tyler's nose. You take two damage. Ooh. So the second action will now be with his right hand. He is lashing out to grab Izzy with his opposite hand. So here comes his thrust forward. It's going to be successful. However, she you are a kid. So as long as you're, I think, aware of it going to be coming, you get an evade action. So okay. that that is one d six, and you got to hope for a five or a six. Unsuccessful. He snaps his other hand forward and grabs you around the throat. So right now, this kid is standing about the same height as both of you, but Gadget and Crystal, you see the horrific sight of this little kid who's actually much smaller than Tyler. <laughs> He grabs both of them by the throat, headbutts Tyler, and then he lifts both of them up, their feet about four inches off the ground, as he's holding each of these kids up in one hand each. And then we will move on to Crystal. Okay. Did Tyler have a turn? No, I go after you. Oh, sorry. I thought I... Oh, I see. I thought that was you first. Okay. I get it. Okay. I'm going to um, run right towards, because I see that Tyler's hurt. So, like, adrenaline is kicking in. So, I'm just going to run straight towards Tyler. So, your first move will get mm -hmm. you to here. And you want to do a second move? Yeah. Okay. So, you rush into the fray. So, you're all considered within close range of each other. Over here that takes your two actions Tyler you're okay. up you are okay. choked and bleeding you believe your nose may be bu busted if not broken okay uh, so in terms of getting out of a grapple like what's for does that just require a standard test or like is outside of me not being able to move out of this is it impeding me in any other way um, what it's doing is it's taking away your ability to evade, um, okay. so, or move. You obviously can't move or evade. So, okay. uh, that's what it's doing. You could still punch and fight back at full skill if you wanted to, or you can try to break free. And if so, I'll, it, I'll let you know how many dice you get kind of based on your strength difference. 
Okay. Um, my first action, I'll try to break free. Okay. So you normally have advantage. And yep. uh, I will say, uh, well, he is also, he's technically stronger than you, but since you have the feet, uh, instead of you having advantage, I'll let it just drop down to a 2d6 test. So a standard okay. test because you have the trait. Anyone else would be at disadvantage. Okay. Now, anything that Izzy did earlier trying to help me, is that factoring in? Um, I will say the grapple, it didn't, it didn't take away... I won't say it won't let it take away her action in this case. I'll say that Izzy, if you want, you could probably still kind of flail and kick, uh, say, be kicking the hand of Tyler, uh, the one that's holding Tyler. Yeah, I'd love to do that. So that would be your like assist that you did. So I'll let it be uh, focused for you. So it'll be a four up instead of a five up, Tyler. Okay, and that's two d six, right? Yep. Right, perfect. Okay, I'll make my roll. <laughs> good thing you with the, good thing good thing Before. you have the help of Izzy because you're trying to break free and this is an unnatural grip on your throat you can't believe the strength coming out of this puny kid compared to you um, but just as you almost have it broke free and the, t the grip starts to tighten around your throat again Izzy being choked herself flailing with her feet kicks the hands or uh, kicks the arm of Henry causing it to dislodge and you come loose so that's your first action what are you doing next okay um i'm going to try and get izzy free uh so i want to try and like pretty much get his grip off of her so my focus my primary focus is to like pretty much get izzy free uh, you know, so I'm not necessarily trying to hurt Henry unless it's sort of like a caveat as part of that. Uh, so would this just be like a standard test, I'm guessing, and with her danger magnet be with advantage? <laughs> well, normal here, there's a couple things to factor in. So normally yeah. you would have advantage in this situation because you're using brute force to break a grip because of your trait. Yeah. Um, but his super strength essentially is going to make it a standard roll. But then you do have the abilities of being kids that you have advantage when trying to help somebody. So I'm gonna say, because of that, it goes back up to advantage. I'll give you a straight advantage roll to make this Okay. Happen. Okay. Here we go. Trying to break easy free. Ooh, nice. <clears throat> okay. So you do so with a complication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're successfully able to break her free. However, in doing so, that as you shove forward and you break the grip, we'll just say that you slip on the snow and a stump at your feet in the uh, trying to exert such tremendous force, and you just trip and fall over, so you're lying prone. Okay, that sounds fair. Um, I thought of one that's a bit worse, but I'll go a little light on you for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> don't want, I don't want complications to be too bad. Um, because they do come up quite a bit. All right, next up, Gadget. All right, Gadget is not much of a get in a fight kind of guy, so he's gonna continue what Izzy tried earlier and find an appropriate sized hitting stick. Okay. In the vicinity. All right. Um, essentially, you can do a standard test. Um, it's this one where you're taking it as like an action in combat. It's kind of more of like searching, right? You're uh, so unless you have any traits to help you search, I don't think you do because you took all gadgeting stuff. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but my quartermaster one does say if I need a piece of gear, and I'm not sure if that would count as gear. No, that would be if you're pulling it out of your bag. Um, all right. But if so you're gonna look go for, a, a, are you looking for a rock or like a, a or a? I'm a looking branch? for a hand size rock or a club size branch. Alright, give me a 2d6 test. Alright, sure enough. Uh, over by you. Uh, you, uh, Your choice, what do you want? Rock or stick? Uh, club, club size stick. Alright, you got a pretty hefty fallen branch. Still pretty healthy. Got a I'm lot of firmness to it. Pick it up and I'm going to uh, 
Say, hey, hey, Tyler. Here, use this. And uh, I'm going to run over and, and try to pass him the, the branch. Yeah, I'll let passing be uh, kind of a free action. You're like holding it out kind of thing, so he can just take it on his turn if he wants, right? Yeah. Uh, for sure. Keeping hefty. I'm like, I'm putting Tyler between me and, and Henry and almost the length of the stick. <laughs> if you understand what I mean. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. And Izzy, you're up. The grip broken around your neck, thanks to Tyler. But Tyler's kind of like laying flat down next to the side of you. And so we're all currently free of Henry. Is there any way that I can help Tyler up and then get back a bit from this kid that just grabbed me? Yeah, if you want to take one of your actions, I'll say it'll take half of your... It'll be a move action, and it'll take half of your move to help him up. Yeah, uh, for sure. So then you still have half a movement. Do you just want to stay engaged with all this, or do you want to retreat? I want to move back a little bit, because if I'm out of his reach, it'll mean that we won't have to keep trying to break away from him, which was bad. Okay, so that's your first action. And what do you want your second action? You could have taken your other action in the other order if you want to. We can reverse order if you plan to do anything while you were engaged. Or you can run off and do something. It's up to you. This kid, you said that his eyes look weird. Is he still, like, obviously using them as eyes? Yes. They're just now very bloodshot, and they're kind of glazed over. Like, he's, like, just got a piercing look about him. With the way it looks like when somebody's, like, either heavily under the influence of something and their eyes are just glazed over. They got like shark eyes almost. Yeah. And yeah. they're that intoxicated. It's almost like that, except a little different. It's kind of kind of freaking you out a little bit. Okay. Is his hood up or down? <laughs> up. Here, let me roll. If it matters. Low, it's... Well, I should have called it first. Uh, I always do that. Uh, uh, low, it's down. High, it's up. It's down. <laughs> Can I take an action using my sleight of hand to try and pull his hood up and, like, pull it closed so he looks like Kenny from South Park? For sure. So if you like wanted... before I move away? If you wanted to do I that like first. blind him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're gonna try to pull his hood down over his eyes. All right. Like, pull the little drawstring on his jacket to sort of close the hood over. Yeah, exactly. All right. That'll require just a standard test, like, in a, same as a an attack. So, 2d6. See if you can pull it off. <clears throat> You do so. You grab his drawstring, pull it in tight, it comes down over his face. He kind of looks like Kenny from South Park, like you said, uh, as it pulls the drawstring really tight. And, it's, and then you help Tyler back to his feet and get about 15 feet away. Yeah, I like to say, let's get out of here, you guys. And then it goes to him. He's going to take his first action to... Uh, undo what you did he grabs his two hands grab the center little hole that you would be there where you pull the drawstrings and he just pulls back and when he does he kind of almost rips the hood part in half it just shreds off of him tearing down in half uh and then i guess technically the two that are in range with him would be crystal and tyler right that's right. Okay. So let's see. Low is Crystal. High is Tyler. Crystal. <clears throat> you see now he lunges forward um, with his hand and he's just trying to bash you in the face like hammer fist style. And trying to smash in your skull. But it goes wide. All right, you are up. All right. Um, all right, let me see. I want to... Tyler's up on his feet, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to push Henry away. Okay. You want to try to, like, push him over the stump to get him to fall over? Yeah. All right. Now, so... That would be, um, <laughs> now I know for all of you guys, for attacking in melee, you all have to do it at disadvantage, except for, 
compiler, I think you picked martial arts, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you and would I get a standard like 2d6. A things. <laughs> yeah, so f- normally it'd be 1d6. Um, for attacking, I'm just trying to decide am I going to make wrestling and grappling fall in the same category? Yeah, she's trying to like push and knock him yeah. over, not grapple him. So. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll I just kind of want to put distance between him and us. I'll let this be a standard test of 2d6. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, nice. All right. He, just like you, he just like you, he also will get a chance to evade. Okay. Which he does. Uh. So as you lunge in and you're going to make contact with him, but at the last second he just kind of like steps to the side and gives you this glaring look as you kind of stumble forward a little bit, just missing him. He only gets one of those per round. Okay. So Um. you used it up, so until his turn comes around, he cannot evade again. Okay. And I have another action? You do, yes. Okay. Is it possible to make a snowball and throw it at his face? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, you just want to like bend down, scoop up snow, and throw it in his face as a distraction. Yeah, I guess like you know, as I went to push him and he evaded, I kind of lost. I guess maybe like a little bit of momentum where I was expecting to connect with him, and then instead I stumbled forward and I was able to grab up some snow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Now, assuming you're just trying to flick in his face, I'm going to say to take the time to bend down, perfectly form a snowball, and then whiz it at his face might be a bit different. Might take a little longer. But yeah, if you're <laughs> essentially trying to use snow to blind him, yeah, just make a test yeah. for me. Just so you make a test for me and see if it'll work. <laughs> Less a ball, more a clump of snow. Just it's just like a clump of snow, just exactly. like a hastily made. Um, I'm sorry, what type of test did you say? Just a standard test, so 2d6. Okay. Oh, no. Nope. All right. That's okay. <laughs> you, do. you have a complication. So as you flick up the <laughs> snow, it just kind of, you bend over. I'm going to say you bend over to try to scoop up the snow. And when you do, similar to what happened to Izzy uh, in the last episode, uh, as you lunge forward and you reach your hands down to make some snow, your both hand, you kind of stumble forward and both hands just plunge down into the ground and it's another pocket of like ice water. And so you go oh. up, up past your elbows with both hands to merge in this like cool little, it's only like a small like three foot pool of water uh, at where the ground dipped. And uh, okay. yeah, you just, you pull them back out and your hands are cold and you weren't able to get any sense of snow. It's just more like slush and shock from the ground giving way beneath you. Um, okay. But so your arms are both cold. We'll keep that in mind. Just like Izzy is cold <laughs> from, the knee, from the knees down. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Tyler, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Uh, since I have this piece of wood that I got from Gadget, uh, and seeing that there's still some friends like crystals up here close and whatnot and gadgets behind me uh i'm going to try and fend off henry with it so i'm going to attack him with a piece of wood which i assume is an improvised weapon yes so i will get advantage on this attack <laughs> nice because <laughs> i am a dirty fighter <laughs> uh okay so i'm gonna make my test okay hey <clears throat> all right um, I'm going to say you swing and you connect. Do you, does yours say it does plus one damage or anything? Yeah. Uh, so where I did roll a one, uh, as part of the dice, it does break, dealing an extra one damage. Okay. All right. So as you grab that stick, you reach back, you grab this about the size of a baseball bat, a little bit smaller maybe, from Gadget. You spin around with all your force and you clock Henry across the face. Um, In doing so, you shatter this piece of wood. It splinters in all directions, and because of your trait, it does plus one damage, causing two damage, as the bark on it kind of like rakes some of the flesh off of 
Henry's face as well as a busted lip and the stick is now useless as it kind of crumbles to the ground but it served its purpose for now okay so I got my other action okay so uh, seeing that stick's been broken what I want to do is um, I would like to use my once per session cinematic moment Oh, already. Okay. So, 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 I, I think you've sort of seeded enough here. So, I want to say what I want to do. So, noticing right nearby when uh, Crystal put her hands uh, and it went into the water, I know there's weak spots along here. So, what I want to do with my cinematic action is knowing that there's like loose, watery ground beneath us, I want to like kick. Uh, I want to kick Henry back and have him fall down through into the water, giving us a chance to escape. Yeah, you see behind him, now that that, yeah, sparked in your mind, you see behind him, you can see, like, the snow is sunken down in an area, and you've got a good feeling that that's another weak spot. And sure enough, you give him a hard boot to the center of his chest. It propels him backwards. He flops down in this, and, like, you see, you hear the crack of the ice, and he goes under. Now, not enough so that only thing you see sticking up is two of his feet and two of his hands. But his head and torso, uh, like, went under. So this one might have been about four feet deep or so. And yeah, I just want to sort of buy us enough time so we can get out of here. That's my intention. All right. All right, so after Tyler, we get into Gadget. Well, seeing all that go down, I'm going to urge when I see the stick hit him across the face and say, like, Ooh. and I'm going to uh, look at everybody and be like, I'm out, and I'm just going to run after Izzy. <laughs> okay. Well, Izzy was only 15 feet away. Uh, are you going to c- continue to run past her? Or are you essentially going to run with her? With? I, w- I wouldn't go on ahead. That would all be right. crazy. So you'll wait. Okay. Perfect. And so then we hop over to Izzy. Okay, I look back to everybody and was like, we're running, right? Yes, go, go! And take off, um, keeping pace with Gat. Uh, Alright, so the two of you are able to get pretty much, uh, yeah, 60 feet start as you begin to take off. Um, it goes to him. You, Henry is just sloshing around and takes his I'm going to say it takes his whole turn to climb his way out of this icy hole and in doing so you see him kind of like he spins under under the water and then he kind of pulls himself up and as you do you see his almost possessed looking face come up out of this icy water the frozen blood trickling down from his lip as he stares at both Crystal and Tyler. Yep, it definitely bought you some more time. Crystal? Okay. So, Uh, he's like probably about eight feet away from you staring up at you, trying to get his way up out of this. Like, just a few seconds just staring, and then like almost like shock is trying to like overtake my body, and then I push it away. I grab Tyler by the hand and I sprint after Izzy and Gadget. Alright. So you're all just going to keep running? <clears throat> yeah. I yeah, because my turn is like right after, so like I'm just going to like start running. Okay. With that, I'm going to say you had one move around there, it would come around to him and so you essentially have a two-turn lead if he chooses to pursue. However, um... With a over 60 foot head start, as you're running through the trees, panting, breathing, trying not to slip, um, I will get everyone to do a standard test to avoid tripping on this wet, snowy terrain. Um, it's slippery, you got to be jumping over logs, under things. Um, but of course, Izzy, you have advantage, because that's uh, one of your dexterous things. I'll say it falls under that category. 
would my athletic come in here? I know it mentions running fast or jumping higher, but I think this is more like Ooh. avoiding things. Probably not. This is about, uh, yeah, this it's about being avoiding slipping and. Okay, so it's more nimble. Okay, yeah. so yeah, less strength. Okay, two d six for me then. If it was like the summertime and you were just plowing through trees, I would let it apply for you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. I just wanted to confirm before I rolled, so I I passed. Um, where are people? Ooh, no. <laughs> Gadgets. Okay. All right. That's my strong suit. Oh no! And is he? <laughs> okay. Two complications. Yeah. Oh no! And crystal. <laughs> Yeah, no, like no complications. Yeah. Uh, like somebody rolled two ones. I think was that you, Kate? Yeah. Okay. Oh. As you're, you have a quite a good lead to the point where you look back, you can't even see where you were. Like there's too much shrubbery in the way. You can't even see Henry anymore. You feel like you got a good lead, but you're still giving it all you got. With that, Crystal, you just slip and face plant down into the snow. <laughs> Um, okay. Tyler, you are having no problem. You're ducking and weaving under branches, and you jump on a rock, almost slip, but you catch yourself, and you still continue to run forward. Um, Izzy and Gadget. Now, one of you, I'm going to say the double ones, just because, Izzy, you rolled double ones. <laughs> you got the worst of the two effects. Um, Izzy, you... When you leap over a fallen log, you land on a rock on the other end that's wet and it causes you to slip down it and twist and torque your ankle. You have oh. injured your ankle. And Gadget, <laughs> you, you kind of like slip going down a hill and when you do, hidden under the snow is kind of like a broken tree and you kind of like impales you in the stomach <gasps> enough to do one point what? Of, one point of damage what not like fully <laughs> impale you but you know if you were sliding in a hill and you brought up against a fallen tree is essentially what happened okay i was like what so, <laughs> when you hear impale i was, I was like, like what? he's been impaled <laughs> okay uh, okay, well, well, you know, that's why I further described it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but, Starting to freak out a little bit. Uh, no, no, he, he didn't just roll a one and totally be impaled and dead. <laughs> no. I was like, how did it's the only injured ankle? If he got the well, I think the injury is worse because exactly like... the injury oh. is worse. <laughs> yeah, the injury is, is like impaling? a lingering effect. All right, so I'll just hop back to all four of you. We're not in initiative. You can just say what you're doing. I said, just I'm sort of looking around in a panic, especially after like everyone's just sort of like to varying degrees sort of slipped and slid and hurt themselves and escape. Uh, Tyler's gonna go and start like rounding up like, ah, come on, we gotta get back to the others. Uh, I like, I'm sort of like try picking up whoever I can. I don't think we came this way. We didn't go up any steep hills. Also, uh, I may have internal bleeding. <laughs> You're definitely running back a different direction as you all fled. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you're not exactly backtracking. Like you said, you're now going down a bit of a hill. Uh, so just uh, to be clear, Gadget is not bleeding? You're not sure. Not not externally, anyway. Okay. You, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, well, what would you do? Okay, so like, just sort of put yourself okay, like, your I'm friends slipped pick... and hurt themselves. I mean, and remember, Izzy's like twisted her ankle. I so... know. Okay, so I would, first of all, pick myself up and kind of like, just quickly brush myself off because my hands are freezing still and now I just went back down into snow. I'm going to look over. Um... I will, okay, so Eddie, I will go to whoever is closest to me. Uh, everybody's pretty much together, except Tyler was in the front. He had to come and run back to meet up with you, but okay. it's up to you. They're both kind of, okay. everybody was tight together because Izzy and Gadget were running side by side, so. Uh, okay, well, if they're side by side, I'll just run over towards the two of them and try to help them. You help them both back to their feet. Take a moment, and Izzy, you put your weight down on your foot, and you realize, you know, that feeling when you 
roll your ankle in a brutal way. The pain shoots up through your leg, and you feel like you can't really put any weight on it. Guys, my, my ankle really hurts. We gotta get somewhere. Shit. Um. Is this? Here, lean on me. And I, I'll wrap my arm, like, like under, like, behind her and around her. Okay. Perception tests for everyone. You have advantage, Mel. <laughs> Crystal. <laughs> I pass. Oh, someone uh, got a few sixes. I don't give complications on perception tests, by the way. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> so, those who passed, which I believe is Tyler and Crystal and Izzy, poor gadget. He <laughs> <You> dice rolls. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's bleeding out. <laughs> he'll, he'll have his moment to shine. He's yeah. not used to physically oh exerting God. himself. Gadget, you're too busy gasping for breath as you just took a nasty hit to the chest. Um, the three of you, now, as Crystal helps you up, and Tyler, you rush back, and you're like, come on, come on, come on! But you hear, from the direction you came, the snapping of branches as if something is running through the trees in your direction. <gasps> Shit, he's coming. Um... Does it look like there's a place where we can hide? Yeah, because we can't run, so I we think We can't that's outrun it. them. Yeah. No, of course. It's a forest. There's lots of places <laughs> to hide. Yeah. We gain advantage on tests to avoid being seen or sneak into small areas, but suffer disadvantage on actions that involve strength or rush force, like, you know, what you mentioned. If you take the sneaky trait, you can re-roll one sneak or hide action per game session. All right, so you guys have advantage on this test. So um, Now, I will let you choose that one of you can roll for the entire party. Or if you're all going to hide in the same spot, it'll just be one roll as you all hide in the exact same spot. Or <laughs> uh, you can spread out and roll individually and all hide in four different spots. Can we hide mm. in pairs? Like if I stay yep. with Izzy? Yeah, you can pair up however you want. Yeah, I don't think we should go solo. I think pairs are all together. So I'll I guess it depends on like what, well, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter what spots we find, so... Okay, we can do pairs, so I can try to hide with gadgets. Okay, so who's gonna roll for each team? You can roll first, Steve, if you want. I, I believe... I know you've rolled a few ones, but you got them out of your system. I, no, that's not how it works. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, let the guy with the unlucky trait roll. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that. Never mind. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> that might be unlucky The GM would be like, nope. Let, yeah. let Gadget catch, catch his breath while you look for a place to hide. Okay. Okay. Not I'll, three I'll times do. per session, three times per day. I, I can oh, roll. Okay. So I, I will roll. Just because he's been out of breath, I'm a bit <laughs> hailer, so I will roll for myself and Gadget. So this is advantage. I'll make that check now. Good. And what about you? Oh, nice. Izzy, you going to roll for you and Crystal? Yeah, I'll roll. Ooh. Ooh, very Ooh. nice. Almost a crit. Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I almost consider that like I consider that like an extreme success if cuz it's if you get double sixes and a 5 because it's like harder to hit criticals uh mm. on 3d6, so it, it's essentially the same thing. Yes. Well, with that, <clears throat> you break off into your two groups. Um, still relatively close to each other as Tyler and Gadget, you just see a large snow-covered boulder uh, with a bunch of trees around it, and you jump and slide over there and get behind it and put your backs up against it, which should be concealment towards the direction you hear of whatever's approaching. And Izzy and Crystal, you both see a big fallen pine tree. It's, it's actually two of them. They're crossed over on top of each other. They both fell in kind of like an X pattern. And there's like a, a small little gap in between where the snow built up around it. And you think that's as good as any spot. And you dive in there. You just stay quiet. You try to maintain your breath, holding your breath after twisting your ankle and running and adrenaline rush. And you're all stressed out. And you hear the sounds of running through the trees 
and then it passes you and continues on until it's just distant and then gone. I think he's gone. Uh, it'll probably backtrack now following her and to get back to the others. I look at Izzy and then um, I kind of poke my head up over the tree and I look around. Do I see anything? I'll say, without making you roll with your perceptive trait, you can clearly see the footprint pattern um, heading off to the uh, east, and then it heads north. Okay. I come back down. I think he's gone, is he? How's your leg? Good, but I'm starting to get cold. You're wet, too. I know, we need to, we need to get out of here. Let's go find the others. I help her out and look for Tyler and uh, Gadget. Sure enough, you can find Tyler and Gadget as they emerge. They're only probably about 20 feet away from you. And now you look around and you're not sure what part of the woods you're in. Which direction are you heading? North, east, south, or west? And you don't even know which direction is what, technically. I guess we can try to follow our, like, footprints uh, back the way we came. Yep, we certainly could. What? I, I want to scattered. I wanna make a test to see if I have, like, one of those rinky-dink cereal box compasses in my book bag. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> All right, go for it. That's just a standard save test, right? Yep. I was also going to ask, while he's doing that, what time of day is it? Or, like, are the stars nice. out? It is... Um, it was just Not around lunchtime, if you remember. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Still day. Okay, <clears throat> never mind. All right. Gadget. Now, sure enough. I uh, I found it. So I'd like to use my clever ability to figure out roughly which way the town is from where the woods are that we are. Like, whether I know it would be east, west, north, south, you know. So roll with advantage, Gadget. Whew. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> so good. Hey, guys, hey, I'm uh, be certain that we need to go and then I'm just going to look at the compass and look around and, and point in the direction that I think I have to go in that direction to get back towards the town and the, and the hill and, and where we came from uh, exactly. But the town is definitely that, that direction from this woods. Okay. Lead the way. I like... Uh, before we sort of go or as we're walking, I'm going to try and find, like, another piece of large wood uh, in case we run into Henry again uh, so I can, like, knock him upside the head. Since there's not a time constraint, I'm going to say uh, as you walk, you sure enough, you can find another stick. You want it one-handed okay. or two-handed? Two-handed. <laughs> okay, so it's a big, hefty... Uh... No, because the last one was only one-handed, and it was like, that didn't work too good, so he's going two-handed. <laughs> So it's kind of like, yeah, a big kind of fall log. Um, now here's the thing. Because of those two things, the great roll from Gadget, in addition to using a compass, I'm going to say it only takes you a very short time, only a matter of about a minute and a half to find yourself. Now, were you heading back to the creek or were you heading back towards the hill? The Jamboree Hill. I think the... I would Generally say the towards... No, to, uh, the hill, like, I don't know how we came in from the creek, but I'm trying to get back to civilization now. Okay, that so you're going, to, you're going straight back to Jamboree Hill, uh, where all the people are sliding down, where the most Vulcan people are. Yeah, okay. well, remember, there were people who were waiting for us back at the creek, so would we want to meet up with them, including, um, what's her this name? This compass doesn't have any numbers or anything on it. It basically has a red yeah. arrow that points north. I'm aiming towards the city. Oh, okay. Okay, well, you're, you're, um, that's why I asked Gadget, because Gadget is the uh, elite. Uh, he's the one <laughs> doing okay, the... This isn't like a super campers mapping compass thing. I don't know what direction or heading we're going. I know that north is this way, and the town is like this way. Okay, so. so why I was saying that is in use of the compass and the great roll from Gadget, it only takes you about a minute and a half to break through the tree line and to see Jamboree Hill in front of you. Thankfully, avoiding getting lost and getting hypothermia for both Izzy 
and Crystal, whose clothes is saturated with ice water right now. And that may have turned ugly. Uh, not to mention getting lost in a forest oh, where you don't know what's out there. <laughs> so, you see the base of Jamboree Hill. Um, yeah, at the bottom of that hill, you break through that forest line and you just see people coming down the hill, having fun, and everybody's in their glee. Except for you four. What do you do? Are we sort of like near the base or near the top or mid? Like where are we? In the terms base. Of... The hill goes down into that tree line. And, okay. Uh, you just emerge down at the bottom. So you got to hike across. And you see off to the side, the uh, skidoo service is there loading up a bunch of kids on the sleigh, getting ready to bring them to the top of the hill. And to the other side, you just see skiers coming down and people on crazy carpets. Tubes. Uh. I guess we should try to make ourselves to like some type of authority figure or whatnot. Like I know that you mentioned a shack where we started the sliding. I didn't know if there was anything like down here at the base, but I guess that would sort of be where the uh, skidoo service is. It's probably the closest equivalent. Mm -hmm. That would be it. There's no shacks or nothing on the bottom of the hill. Yeah. So I guess sort of lead over there. Cause I mean, we need to get like the girls. So is it in a building or is it just outside? It's a, uh, there is near the top of the hill, you know, there is a small little, like, lodge thing that they just put there. they got washrooms and a place for the staff to go. Um, it's just very small. It's only for the, like, the people who are operating the skidoos to have a place to maintain, like, hold supplies. So it's like okay, the size so of, like, a, it's about the size of a trailer in a trailer park. Okay. Yeah, we still need to get them some help, so I think that's where we should sort of go. Or I think I know this is where Tyler is going to sort of gravitate and try and push uh, the others to go to just to get some help. With that, you do notice that uh, off to the far side, you do see Camila, and she is talking to an adult skier in a state of panic, but they're very far off, probably about 200 feet away. Camila said she was going to get some help. Uh, still, like, she's too far away, so I think the priority is still to keep going where we're going. For sure, yeah. All right, so you rush towards the skidoo and the sleigh. Um, you just can barely get there in time. He kind of, like, holds it for a second because he sees you running through the snow, and he waits for you to arrive. So what are you doing? You're just jumping on the sled part in the back, or are you going up to him? I think uh, going up to them, because I mean, like, and I, I think we would sort of stand out, because I mean, we're all scuffed up. Like, I'm coming up with, like, you know, caked blood that I haven't even wiped away going over my mouth. Uh, we've got, like, uh, Izzy limping along, and I don't know, like, how serious the wound is on a gadget, but, like, we're all looking pretty rough as we're coming up here, so I'm sure he probably had some questions as he sees his approach. Yeah, so if you rush more up to him, because um, he might not have seen all that, because like I said, it's like two big uh, sleighs attached to a back of a skidoo, because they, they haul up like 10 kids at a time. So, you know, if you were approaching from the back, you could have, uh, he might not have seen you in the commotion. <laughs> um, but either way, you rush up towards him. And this uh, man with a big scruffy beard, big handlebar mustache, just looks at him and says, Oh my God, what happened to you kids? You take a tumble into a tree? Yes. Ugh. Well, get on. I'll bring you up to the shack. We got a first aid kit up there. Climb on. Help Izzy on. Izzy looks at you limping. Izzy, it's like, you want to ride up front? Uh, I'll just stay with my, my friend, okay? Thank you, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tyler just sort of like, sort of a little bit out of breath and sort of like looks like he's going to say something and then not really sure what and just sort of like sits in with the others. Okay, so you all pile in this big sleigh in the back. A bunch of other kids around you, they're all laughing, talking, carrying on. A couple of people that see you are just like wide eyed and looking at you like, Ooh, what happened to them? Did they get in a fight or what? Thinking like, you know, like you would if you seen another kid with a busted face. Um, but, skidoo. As we revs up. go. Can I watch the tree line to see if I see anything like Henry? 
coming yep. through. Give me a Or any of the other missing kids. Yep, perception oh, sorry. test. I think there's only one other missing kid. Oh, yeah. Um, standards? No, you have advantage because you have perception. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Forget what I have. <laughs> oh, the complication. <gasps> well, he said there's nothing on that per, per comp, no complications for perception. Yeah. Oh, yes. I don't like being like constantly being like, yeah, a dust gets in your eye. <laughs> like, it's just. <laughs> it's like, no. It doesn't Snowball. make sense. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I might make a complication for perception if you're like per- trying to walk around and perceive in the dark room and you stumble over something, but pretty that much. That makes sense. 99% yeah, yeah, of that, the that, time. That, that makes sense. <laughs> right now. Um, okay, you look back at the tree line. You do not see any of the other kids uh, or anything uh, along that lines. However, you do catch a brief glimpse of something moving in the tree line along the snowy trees you catch a glimpse of some kind of red clothed figure disappear into the darkness of the tree canopy bright red we know who wears bright red i squeeze izzy's hand and i go look and i don't know and you look and it's too late there's nothing there It was just like frantically scanning. What? I thought I see. I thought I seen something. <sighs> so, what? What do we tell people? I mean, like, what even just happened? I don't know. That wasn't normal, right? Like that. That was a little scrawny little kid. Oh, and like. You know, you sort of put Tyler puts his fingers around his throat, and like, I mean, he shouldn't have been able to do that. And I mean, he was, he was dead. I was positive, but what happened? And uh, we should, uh, should go back to Camila and the others before they decide to head into the woods as well. Well, too late for that now because you're halfway up the hill. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the skidoo comes to the top and all the kids jump off start running back towards the top with their sleigh uh, different sleighs and different things that they have uh, the skidoo driver says alright little miss follow me in here I'll get you patched up you too dear buddy <laughs> looking at you with the busted face <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah um if we're being seen... And he looks at uh, uh, Gadget, he's like, Hey you, what's your problem? You got asthma or something? You're breathing kind of heavy. It, the tree... branch... It hurt a lot. Jeez, you kids. Crazy. Alright, what about you? He looks at you, Crystal. <laughs> um, I'm fine. My friends. Alright, well, anyway... Follow me. And he brings you in, uh, kicks open this little shack, and goes on in. Yeah, before I go in, I'm going to turn to Crystal, such as, go find Camila. Stop anyone else from going into the woods. Okay. Okay. And I run off. Okay. Like, wrapping my arms around my body to keep warm, but I, I run looking for Camila. Okay. All right. Back down the hill. <laughs> Back and you're down off the on a hill. solo mission. <laughs> <laughs> solo mission. All right. So we'll go to the three of you first. You step inside this little shack, and he goes over, clams out a first aid kit, gets it there. All right. You said, uh, there he's like, oh, here, uh, come over here, kid. And he grabs you, Tyler, and he's trying to use these different things to clean up your face. He gets a bit of the alcohol swabs and that kind of thing, disinfect your face. Um, he's like, oh, that's a busted lip. I don't know how good a band aid's gonna be on your lip. You're just gonna have to hold this here. And he takes your hand and just gauze and like pushes it up against your lip. He's like, keep the pressure on there. Yeah. Actually, you had a nose, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was a nose you said. Yeah, yeah. so, so he yeah. Uh, gives you this thing to squish up against your nose and he's just like, that'll yeah, pinch it off till the bleeding stops. Uh, and then he goes over to you, Izzy. <clears throat> All right, I think I got some wraps here for you. Put your feet up. Holds her foot up for him. 
and he just gets there some rat things and starts doing up this thing around your uh, ankle and he's like are your parents here no not today my mom went to work in the city but I'm okay uh, my friends are with me I don't know if you're injured I'm supposed to call your parents da, da, da. I mean I suppose you could call my mom in from the city but I mean that's probably a lot of work for you right uh <laughs> you trying to persuade him <laughs> yeah all right, you can go ahead. You can roll <laughs> an advantage. You know your popularity wouldn't really apply to <laughs> Shaq guy. I'll still let it do it. Uh, I was like, who's the adult here? <laughs> says, but he's like, yeah. Well, I won't right now. I got. I do have a. I got to get back. That those kids are gonna. All right. Uh, this ain't or too urgent. I'll just give him a call later. What's your number? I'll, call, I'll probably call him later today. I'll write down the number, but I'll use really shitty kid writing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you write that down while he's working on your leg. Um, and, uh, and then he just goes over to Gadget. He like, looks at you and he says, is there anything I can do to help you? You just got the wind knocked uh, out of you. I think I, I, I'm just going to look kind of down my coat and shirt. And is there any, like, puncturing? Any uh, blood? No, you can just imagine it's a nasty bruise with a little bit of trickle of blood. As if you ran into... If you were like... Yeah, you ran into the edge of a stick. So... I'll just I'll just take a band-aid, please, sir. <clears throat> yeah, 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 alright. And he gives you a big one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I thank him, and as soon as he turns his head, I stick the band-aid in my book bag. <laughs> nice. One big band-aid. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, um, well, pretty much you finish up in there as we hop over to Crystal. As you're rushing down the hill, coming up the hill as fast as they can on foot is Camila and some adult. Okay. And you meet up with them. <clears throat> and as you do, Camila shouts out and it's like, Crystal, is that you? Yeah. Are you okay? Uh huh. I'm fine. What about you? Where's everyone else? Um. What was it? Did you find found, out what it was? We found Henry, but he didn't look like Henry, and he, he, there was something wrong with him, and he's in the woods, and I don't know, and he attacked us. What? She just looks, like, shocked. The adult's like, Henry... Okay, there's a boy named Henry, you're saying, lost in mm. the woods or hurt in the yes. woods? And he's attacking um, people? He was. He... We found him, and he... It looked like something happened to him, and he looked... He looked like he... I take a deep breath. He looked like he was dead. And then he got up. And then he, and then he started to chase us. The, the adult's eyes just go wide and it's just like, can't believe what she's hearing. Please, okay. you have to believe me. Okay, okay, we're gonna go get some help. We're gonna go up to that shack up there. We'll, we'll get that man with the skidoo and he could start to search for that kid. Um, we gotta try to find out, do you know the kid's parents we could give them a call as she, she's saying all this as rushing taking you and rushing back towards that shack um if i know any information <clears throat> i will relay it you know and then i'll say it was by the creek but don't you have to take people lots of people what why why do we need a lot of people he Can't... was really strong well okay 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 hang on just stay calm stay calm and now camila's around next to you and she's just like what do you mean? He, he was... He attacked you? Yes. What? He grabbed... He hit Tyler. He grabbed Tyler and Izzy. It was so fast. She's just baffled by the whole thing. You make your way up to the shack. You rush inside with this adult that you don't... Never seen before. <clears throat> and... You rush in and she starts to explain everything that you were saying 
you just hear overhear her talking to that guy and he's kind of like taken back by it as well um, while these two adults are quickly having this conversation for like 30 seconds anything you four are doing or you're just gonna wait it out I go over to Gadget and Izzy and I ask if they're both okay yeah you ready to wrap my foot up I'm doing good um, okay we should probably get out of here though because these adults are gonna have a lot of questions what even just happened oh wow. no we, we should I'm just get away from the woods, though. All right. Well, if there's a kid lost in the woods, um, uh, all right. And he looks over at you for. Well, uh, you uh, you say you know where this kid is. Can you bring me to him? We'll hop on the old uh, snowmobile there, and uh, I'll bring you down. We'll find this kid. And uh, he looks over uh, to the other woman. It's just like. Try to find that kid's uh, parents in the phone book there. Give him a call. Let him know. And, uh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go start searching for him. And uh, if I don't find him, I'll uh, radio up. See this radio over here? And he shows this lady that he's got a CB radio in there. And he's just like, I'll radio back if I can't find him within the next 20 minutes. And if not, we'll have to get the uh, search and rescue involved. All right. Let's go, kids. And he makes his way on out. Are you going to follow the guy? Or are you sneaking off? I'm exchanging looks with everybody else. I don't want to go. I think we've missed our window to sneak away. <laughs> yeah. Why oh, not you? man. He's going outside now and prepping to skidoo and putting more gas in it. So... There's an there's the option for you. If you so choose. <sighs> Okay. Mm. I know well, I, what Crystal would do. Well, then yeah. do what Crystal would do. <laughs> Crystal would go <laughs> with the guy. Okay, as he sees the determined look in Crystal's eyes and she sneezes. <sighs> this is a bad idea. What's a gadget look like he's doing? Thinking really, really hard. Is there any Sizing up the size of the. The snowmobile driver guy thinking maybe he can potentially take this guy I don't know it's hard to say he has a radio does he have a walkie talkie or is this uh, how is he connected to the CB radio yep. in the, he's, in he's the got tower? a walkie talkie and there's an actual like CB radio in the shack with a little antenna attached to the top of that kind of thing you know I guess we should go Go There's some other kids there? by the the creek. Like if they don't get help, what what if Henry went after the kids by the creek? Yeah, we should we should go there first to make sure they're gone. And but like, what something did that to Henry? Like, what what could do that? Come on, kids! That boy could be freezing his ass off down there. Are you coming or not? <laughs> Revving up the <laughs> snowmobile outside. Go climb on the snowmobile. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have we'll a go. trailer on it, or is it just? Um, with this, yeah. You see, now that's what he was doing—a bit of prep where he put some gas in, and uh, he dislodged all the uh, uh, sleighs except for like one. So he's only keeping one on there, because uh, it's more maneuverable with just one. And he tells for you to hop in the back. Is there like a blanket or something in the back that I can put over myself? There was one, there was a bunch in the shack. I, okay, could I have grabbed one? Sure. Okay. Um, and I'll, as we sit there, I'm going to hold on to Izzy's hand. I'm just going to squeeze it really tight, not say anything. I'm going to run back to the lady in the shack. Ma'am, it was it, not not a lot of sun can get through the trees in there. Do you have any spare flashlights that we could take with us? It might help. And you can see see her. She's like in her ski clothes, bright neon pink ski clothes, and she's just like, <laughs> me? No. Ah, uh, there could be some here though. Um, yes, yeah, that's, that's what I'm in. All right, roll your luck for me. 
Roll your luck. 2d6. See as you quickly scan around the shack to see if you're lucky enough to see. Um, yes. You see a flashlight on the ledge. Wait, can I take this, ma'am? Please? Uh, yeah, yeah, just bring it back. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It's not mine. And she's, like, picking up the phone now, and she's, like, uh, looking through the phone book. Crouch, crouch, crouch. I wonder what Henry's parents' names are. And you rush out the door with a flashlight. You got your flashlight. <laughs> that you wanted uh, during and, character creation. <laughs> and I'm assuming, just because I know the system works different, we didn't actually heal any like hit points or anything during that little first aid bit, right? No, it doesn't work that way, no. No, that's why I was confirming. I was just making sure I didn't need to update anything. Nope. So... You all hop in and go on down the hill. And he's looking for your guidance. So where are you guiding him to? The creek. Yeah, we'll go to the creek first to make sure that's cleared out. <clears throat> okay. All right. You head to the creek. You see Carrie, Jimmy, Jeremy, Dennis, and Isabel laughing and carrying on as you roll up on the skidoo and they all kind of stop what they're doing they got a fire going they're roasting marshmallows and they're all kind of shocked as the skidoo is pulling up they didn't expect that he stops the skidoo shuts it off well where's this kid now one of these no sir no. Was... have you guys seen henry so Dennis was one to one was the other kid who went into the woods. He was, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you ask if Henry's there and they say, uh, no, uh, no, I thought he was with you looking for Camila's bracelet. That's what Roop says, because he's munching on licorice. Uh, uh, Dennis, you were with Henry in the woods. Like, what happened to cause you guys to get separated? And Dennis says, well, I wasn't really with them. We kind of broke off as soon as we left the creek here. We just kind of gathered up some wood and I came back. That's it. Did you, did you see anything strange while you were in there? No. What do you mean? You mean, is he lost? Uh -huh. As he looks at he you and be. looks at the adult. <laughs> he, yeah, he's hurt. He, we, we hurt, found hurt real we saw bad. some saw some blood and and uh, we, we never, we're not sure. Oh, I know the kid's expression kind of changes here now. Like, oh, jeez! And uh, with that, Roop drops his uh, bag of marshmallows in shock. And uh, yeah, no, uh, they are like shaking their heads, like no, we haven't seen him. He didn't come back here. And I look around to see roughly the trail that we would have started our original wood-looking, jewelry-looking trip on. Yes. Is there any indicator of which way we walked into the woods? Um, yes. I will say that the snow at this point is pretty much done. Yeah, you can see your trail there where you guys were all five of you hiked through the woods that would not be filled in by now. We, we went that way, mister. Yeah. Alright, well, get on. Like, but before we go, I'm just gonna, like, look to the others and say, like, if Henry comes back, run back to the lodge. Don't talk to him, just run back. What? They all kind of see, kind of, like, confused and looking at each other. What do you, what do you mean, don't talk to him? They just that that went right over their heads. while they wouldn't talk to their friend when he comes back. They're just like, "Who's this guy?" You know, like what? <laughs> like they're just that's a weird thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to say as you hop on, yeah, Tyler Connor says that does not elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you drive off in the sled of a skidoo. All right, so you go through, uh, you follow the path back on a skidoo. It only takes like a minute or two, <clears throat> and then you come to the bloody trail. And I assume you follow that to where you had the encounter with Henry. And you get there, and this is the area where you had a scuffle. 
and uh, he stops the skidoo for a minute, and he's just like, oh, all kinds of tracks around here. It looks like they head this way. When he starts heading, you know, off to the west, same way you guys took off running. And As we're going, I would like to keep an eye out to see if, like, Henry backtracked or if there's anything else in these woods that's weird. Yeah. Um, for sure. Roll perception, since you're actively looking, I'll let you know. Um, <clears throat> again, a branch in the eye. No, no. Uh, but, it's like, damn it. <laughs> but no, you, uh, you, you're scanning around and you don't see anything else out of the ordinary other than your own footprints. And then you see where your own footprints all branched off when you made your way after you had the compass and you see his footprints head off another direction. You follow that for um, just about two minutes on the skidoo, and it comes up to a creek, uh, an area of this creek that you're assuming is the same creek, but it just goes further and bends around. And with that, you just see that the footprints go right into the creek and disappear into the water. And he pulls the skidoo up. <laughs> Oh my. Well, these tracks, if they are the kids, he went for a swim or what? Is that kid crazy? As you look at like the flowing water, it's kind of fast paced and only frozen near the edges of the shoreline. He looks back at you like befuddled now. Well, I'm gonna have to call this in. This is ridiculous. Gets his radio out, calls up. And he's just trying to talk to Lady in the Shack. What are you guys doing? Uh, I want to take a look around at this area just to sort of to see if there's anywhere else uh, or anything else around here besides the creek. Uh, no, it just looks like the rest of the forest is, and it's just a creek. You don't see anything else stand out. Does it look like just without getting out of the the sleigh? Does it look like? It's deep? Like... Yeah, you would say this, if you're guessing, is anywhere from four to eight feet deep. Oh, that's okay. In different areas. Mm. And the creek's just sort of flowing deeper within. Yeah, it's deeper near the center, you know. You kind of walk in there. In the deep, that's what you would assume. It's not like a full river, it's a creek, but, you know still enough that you would, would have struggle you would struggle greatly to try to just swim across this thing not to mention the freezing uh, ice water did, did he just like go down the creek like, why none of this makes sense oh well, either that or he like walked backwards through his footprints and did something weird I don't know do we see any blood anywhere on the snow? Anywhere at all? So you're still actively bleeding out, I'm guessing. Um, I'll say, since you're all actively looking, it's very sporadic, but you do see the occasional drop. Enough that somebody who had a busted lip and didn't take care of it and probably dripped every 20 feet or so. Something like that. So I'll say you do see, like, a drop before it goes into the creek. So definitely going into the creek. The footprints, you can tell, lead into the creek. The shape of the foot and everything, you know. Uh, I think we did all we could do. Like, Tokyo yeah, can't, can't, they know. Yeah, we should We should go back. I mean, they can, they can get a search crew to look for them. I don't know what they'll find. I mean, yep, we should go. Uh, you're the guy. We're going to head back now. Uh, we got search and rescue on the way, some police on the way. Uh, I'm gonna take care of this, lead him down here, let him know what I've seen. Uh, yep. Alright, hold on, kids. <laughs> he gives it. And so you hold on. And a couple minutes go by, and he crosses back and goes up the hill. And drops you off. He's like, You all can take off there now. Um, uh, I got. One of your names there. What was your name again, little one? And he looks at you, Izzy. I just say Izzy. Izzy? Izzy what? 
Baxter. Izzy Baxter. Izzy Baxter. Izzy Baxter. I won't forget it. I won't forget it. All right. All right. You you go on. Uh, You (laughs) might. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give your name uh, over to uh, the police in case they need to ask you anything, I guess. I don't know. I'm going inside. Just. (laughs) <laughs> he starts grumbling and he goes inside his shack and shuts it's the like door. like kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're at the top of the hill. What are you doing? We should go. Do you want to go to the burn? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Yeah. You guys make your way up. Grab your sleighs and things and you pull them and it's quite a hike. It takes, you know... About 35 minutes walking through through the town, dragging your different sleighs, but you make your way out to this small ranch area that belonged to Crystal's parents, although they used to have a lot of horses going around and things like that here. Not so much now since your accident. And you're not riding horses like you used to. But they do have this big barn with little use for it and a lot of land. And this is where you've made your clubhouse. We did determine that your clubhouse had... I believe it was a generator to provide electricity within. And the tools, I believe we picked. Workshop type deal. Yeah, it's a workshop. Yeah, so you, uh, and you got a workshop there. So those are the two features you have. And otherwise, you make your way to the main door there, you slide it, you go on in, and you don't have a lot set up in here. It's not like you have a really good dedicated recreation room or anything, but you do have a couple places to crash, sit down, an old table there, that kind of thing. Will we have like a change of clothes or something stashed away here? Or a heater of some sort to plug into the generator. Let's do two tests. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll get Crystal to roll to see if you have some clothes stashed away. And um, I'll let you roll for having a heater in here. A small little like heat dish kind of thing. So uh, roll gadget. A little 2d6 test as well. Let's just see. I'll let the dice determine whether you have it. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> you did not prepare. You guys aren't allowed to roll for anything. I did, <laughs> I did steal the blanket from the shack, so I have that, I guess. Yeah, you're not, you didn't prepare for winter yet. It's your first snowfall. You've been busy with school. Um, but now you quickly realize you guys got to get a heater. It'd be a good idea to keep an exchange of clothes here. <laughs> So no, it's cold and kind of, but you're out of the elements and uh, I'm going to go to the little tinker shop then and I'm going to start working on uh, something to make a fire pit out of. Okay. Try to find an old uh, wash bin or some metal circle inside of a washer or dryer or something. Anything that I could find that would be, uh, keep the rest of the, we put a small fire in, contain it. All right. So you're working on that. Um, What's the rest of you guys doing? Um, do you think... Do you think we're going to talk to the police about what happened? Probably. So, I mean, but I don't know what to say. I mean... Like, I guess... That we, like, went in, we found him bloody, he... was... just out of his mind, and we just ran out, and... I mean... It looks like he just jumped into the creek, so I, I guess Why that's the end of this. I mean, was that like rabies? Is that what he had? Oh, maybe. Like He had a pretty big gash in his leg, though. He lost too much blood. Maybe he just tripped on something. I mean, like, you hurt yourself in the woods out there. Yes but I couldn't pick you and Iz up over my heads because of it. <laughs> no, no. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was just like adrenaline. I mean, when you, you get all worked up and that, do all sorts of crazy things. 
Yeah, that's all it was. So we're going to stick to Tyler's story if we have to talk to the cops. And we really haven't said anything else outside of that, right? I don't really remember what I said. Okay, that's okay. But maybe... Um, we were in shock, right? So... People who are in shock say weird things, right? Yeah, not- definitely. Okay. But oh, my parents are going to kill me. Totally, I mean, it's all over now, but I'm not looking to head to the woods anytime soon. You think he 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 didn't come out of the creek? He was in the creek. We didn't see him. There was nothing, right? And I kind of like look around. Well, I mean, search and rescue is getting involved. They'll find him, but they'll probably just, you know, maybe find his body somewhere. I mean, he's been taken away by the current. I mean, the water's too cold. Yeah, it's definitely too cold. That's so I just go over and sit by Crystal and just like kind of look at her because I think she's. Oh, I think she's more shaken up, and I'd like not to think about me. Kind of like leaning against you. I'm really cold. Me too. I'll have that fixed in a second. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. I'll sort of like head over and like help a uh, uh, gadget sort of like bring something together. <laughs> okay. How's your ankle? Any better? Eh, it, it'll be fine. I hurt myself often enough when I was learning to skateboard and stuff. <laughs> I remember. Right, Gadget, you rig up something that you think should be able to contain a fire uh, within the confines of inside this barn without hopefully lighting it all ablaze. Uh, There's lots of ventilation. <clears throat> there is lots of ventilation. It'll be really warm then. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty spacious uh, barn. Uh, I'm not talking about lighting a bonfire, you know, just to... Uh, Exactly. Fire to keep it warm. Yeah. Drive some I'll say that's easy enough done for you. Just you take uh, about 15, 20 minutes to do so. You bring it over. Now, how are you going to light it? Well, that's why I'm a bit of a MacGyver. Um, and I'm going to, uh, to whip up a flint uh, and steel contraption uh, with a bit of uh, old hay that used to be in this barn. I'm going to get you to roll a test for me for that to see if you can uh, get this going. Sure. I'm going to have advantage on that test because I am a MacGyver. <laughs> according to the skill MacGyver. <laughs> of course. But with your rolls, you're going to be MacGruber! <laughs> it's possible. I did just find to... the compass and let us out of the woods in like a minute and saved all your just... lives. Just throw that out there. Uh, just yeah, you... try not rolling a one. Oh, I mock you, nice. and you spike the dice. I like it. Wow, yeah. nice. I can do compasses. I can do making flint steels. I can make a fire pit. I just can't fight a zombie. <laughs> yeah. Or Excellent. run away from one. I did yeah. not do well in gym class. All right, this so, is your jam, though. Well, you roll incredibly well, so tell me what you rig up for everybody here. All right, so uh, I, with the, enough old wood materials and stuff, I find enough stuff to, to fuel a fire. But uh, with the hay, I, I got a little, kind of like a, an old-fashioned stick that you go into the woods and you you know you spin and you blow, except it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, I, I've rigged up like this sort of little bit of power thing I could find so it spins this piece of metal automatically on this other piece of metal and just sparks are going nuts. Um, <laughs> so it's a little more like a out of control flint and steel but it is contained to one ish area yeah like a makeshift grinder uh, going with yes <laughs> exactly what i've done i've made a makeshift grinder yes all right <laughs> uh you're like hey, let's use this for something with the horseshoes i'll just rig this up and <laughs> it's like sure enough uh you guys just hear like the generator going for a minute then <laughs> <laughs> yeah a minute later the you got a nice fire going in the center of your barn. You can all huddle around it and keep warm. Thigh out. You're wrapped up in your blanket. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say or do while hanging in your clubhouse? How long are you going to stay here for? At, right now, it's about... It was 1 when you arrived. It's probably 1.30 in the day now. 
think Crystal will probably doze off with, after like all of that running around, the adrenaline, freezing. Now there's like a warm fire. I think she would just pass out. I'm gonna say with everything going on here and you're gonna stay here for at least an hour or so, everybody can remove one point of stress. That's good, I need that. All right, so essentially how long are you gonna stay here uh, before you head back to wherever you're going to head back to? I really need to get home for supper. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler's really in no rush to go, but like he'll go if everyone else is. You're an American. It's, there's no supper. There's just lunch and dinner. <laughs> Fair. So you're all going to head back to your homes? Probably. Yeah, I'll help to... Izzy get back to her place. All right. So you all make it back to your respective homes. And you help Izzy get home. You walk in the door, all of you kind of make your way home. And when you do, we're gonna say it's getting close to dinner time now. And so it's about four, about 3.30 in the evening. So, you know, in about an hour or so. And you know your parents will be getting home within the next hour or two for most of you, except Izzy, your father was already home with your sister. Izzy, when you walk in the door, your father calls you over. Izzy, come here, we gotta talk. Yes, sir. Where you been? Went to the sledding hill and then I sort of slipped and, and twisted my ankle a bit. So we went to, um, we went to sit in Crystal's barn for a little bit because it was sore and, and now here. Yeah, well, uh, well, what's going on? You you went out slid, sledding today, right? There's uh, that's it. That's all that happened. Cause I'll tell you what, the uh, police called, and now at 6 p.m. they want us to come in. I'm supposed to bring you in. Oh, there was a there's a kid that got lost in the woods. Someone said we were trying to help this girl find her bracelet. And then she said that he was just, like down in the woods and we had to take a snowmobile out. No, oh, so you weren't involved in nothing then? No. Uh, they must be just have some questions for some kind of kid then. All right, all right. Just didn't know if you are kind of trouble you're getting into. I, mean, I would not get every, into trouble. Not every day to police call, you know. <laughs> That's true. All right, well, uh, get yourself something to eat. Um, unless you want to wait for me, I'll make something, I guess. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll get something, but maybe for now, um, the, the hill's not super safe if a kid went missing, so maybe, maybe Smidge shouldn't go? Yeah, for sure. By the sounds of this, uh, we're not going to be sending her or you back there anytime soon until we figure out what's going on. I mean, I can't believe I got a... Go back to that police station. Last time I was there, it wasn't on good terms. No arguments here. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's get something to eat. And uh, he kind of heads on out in the kitchen, even though it's only like 3.30. He's just uh, kind of pre-prepping whatever he's going to make for supper. Tyler, you head on home. Yep. Or do you go to gadgets? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, what? The? I would probably go back to my home for now. Neither one of your parents are home, but so do I know if they should be home around this time or not? I should say. You know, your mother had to go to work. Uh, your father didn't. He had the day off. So you're not really sure okay. where he is, but you can see there's a message on the answering machine. I'll listen to the message. Yeah, it's, uh... Hello, this is Officer Calhoun calling uh, for the Westcots. Uh, your son, Tyler, uh, possibly may have some information on a case we're working on. I would like uh, you 
to one of you, one of the adults of the household, to bring Tyler to the police station at 6 p.m. for questioning. If not, we'll send a car by your way later this evening, but we'd rather not have to do that. For everyone we have to talk to today, I hope you can understand. Uh, our number is blah 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 blah. You can call if you have any questions. And I hangs up. Okay. Yeah, not surprised by that. Um, not going to really look around to see if my father's there, but one thing that I will do before I forget uh, is I am going to go up take out five bucks and break it down and lay it on the table. <laughs> okay. Nice. Okay. Good job for remembering. <laughs> and, so, uh, so I'm going to subtract that, not from my what I have on, but I'm going to take it out of my um, stash. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mark it off. And you're yeah, good. so I've got that done. Um... um and I guess after I do that, I'll, I guess I'll like look around to see if my dad is around. You look around and no, you don't see him around. I'll wait a few minutes, but if there's like no sign of it, then I'll probably head over to Gadgets. So you can sort of go with his scene before I like, <laughs> you know, come into it. All right. And uh, Gadget, you head home and... Um... Yeah, you, both your parents had to go to work, uh, but you go home and your older sister Valerie is uh, up in her room. You can hear some music blaring. I'm guessing uh, Paul Abdul or something. I don't know if that was 83. It probably wasn't. It's was probably later 80s, but <laughs> some kind of pop music from the early 80s is going in her room. Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. She's probably oblivious to you being home. And, uh, yeah, is there anything in particular you wanted to do? Uh, no, I'm, I'm gonna go if my parents aren't home yet. Um, just gonna take off my snow gear, and uh, I'm gonna go have a look at how bad this is in the bathroom on my chest. Then go up to my room and just tinker around to get my mind off things. All right. And, uh, Crystal, you head home. <clears throat> and nobody's home. There is a message on the answering machine blinking away. I'll check it out. You check it out. It's essentially the same type of message that Tyler had, except related um, to you and requesting that your parents bring them in there. All right. And it said what time? Six o'clock? Yes. Yep. And what time would the police car be by to pick us up if we're not there? <laughs> by seven. By seven. All right, I will. I'll leave the message. I won't delete it. I'll go upstairs. I'll kind of like shower, change, uh, grab something to eat. Well, and I'll probably and then I'll call Izzy. Well, as after you do all that showering and you head back downstairs, you're um, you're just finishing like drying your hair, and you hear a doorbell ring. Doorbell ring. Mm-hmm. Do you answer it or ignore it? Is this is this is this weird? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the front <laughs> your doorbell. It's a front doorbell. <laughs> Ding dong. And what time is it? Uh, now it's about uh, four thirty, five o'clock. Okay, almost, so it's five, not it's the a, police. It's about five. It's about five. I'd say. Okay. Um, I go down. I'm going to. Is there like um, it's like a baseball bat or something <laughs> I can grab, <laughs> or like an umbrella? <laughs> I would say an umbrella, not so much a baseball bat in your household. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, I'm gonna grab an umbrella. And is there like a way that I can kind of look out, uh, like through a window without Ding being dong! seen? To see who it is. <laughs> knock, 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 knock. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm not answering it until I can if I can see who it is. All right, you peek out through the side, into the curtains <laughs> out front to see who's at the front door, and you just see uh, a so a pizza delivery person with a big sigh just drop two pizzas on your front step and turn and walk away. Okay, I put the umbrella to the side. I open up the door. I call it, thanks. 
And he looks back as he's getting in the car, just gives you a wave, and then gets inside this little car and boom, 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 drives off. And there's okay, two I bring pizza inside and I lock the door. <laughs> My dad's like running for mayor. Nah. <laughs> and as you recall, you asked for pizza for supper today. I did. Uh, I guess mom paid for it. <laughs> she called it in and paid for it. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. So. We'll grab a slice out of the box as I go into the kitchen and lay the rest on the counter. <laughs> All right. So you do not need to make anything as you eat that. So now around 530, everyone's parents show back up home. Um, now, Tyler, were you going to leave before then, or I don't know? Uh, so, how, what what time would it be, what time would I have gotten home? Just sort of get an idea if I would I'm leave. Not or not. sure. Probably around four. And parents aren't showing up till five thirty. But you said my dad should have been home anyway. So I, uh, I probably would have been over at Gadgets until about five thirty when I know my mother would have been home. Yeah, so you, I'm going to essentially say that you're all home, just to speed things up a little. Uh, you all get home, and you're all finished eating your supper. <clears throat> and with that, the message gets checked by... You didn't delete the message either, did you, Tyler? So uh, I did not. All right. And Gadget, um, all of you, uh, your parents essentially approach you, kind of give you the same kind of... Sp- Beach of wondering what's going on, what happened at the park. Um, we got to get you down to the police station within the next 30 minutes. So hurry up and eat your food. Apparently, there's something went down at the uh, the park today or at the hill today. Now, I already heard um, Izzy's story. What story did the other three of you give your parents when you're confronted with having to go to the police station? Oh, just what I said. Uh, yeah, the, the kid Henry, uh, you know Henry from School Dad. Um, he he went uh, into the woods looking for firewood for for the fire by the creek, and, uh, and you know he didn't come back. And then then Camilla came back, and she had lost her bracelet. So we went looking for it, and then and we found uh, Henry. He, he he looked hurt. And we he he kind of went a little crazy and and started attacking uh, Tyler and, and Iz. So we ran for it. And then when we got out of the, the woods, we we went straight to the authorities. Well, the guy running the skidoo, I guess he's an authority, and he uh, we we showed him where he was. When we went back to find find Henry, he was he was gone. So I guess that's what they wanted to ask us. Oh, okay. So you tell him all of that, and. He's just like, oh, I can definitely see why the police will need to have words with you and probably every other kid on that hill, especially if you had any issues with them. And he'd say he attacked you. All right, well, we'll try to get to the bottom of it. Crystal, how do you inform your parents of what happened? You don't need to go into too much detail if you don't want to, but you can essentially say whatever you want. <laughs> no, I just say uh, a couple of the kids uh, we were supposed to have ate up. Um, had like a little fire with some marshmallows. A couple of the kids went off into the woods to get some firewood. When we showed up, um, one of the kids came back. She lost a bracelet. We went into the woods to help find it. And we came across Henry. And he looked hurt. We went to go help him. And then he grabbed Tyler and Izzy. Uh, we tried to get away and get help. And when we got help we couldn't find him okay so you're basically telling the parents the truth yeah okay and what about you tyler do you tell your parents the truth of kind of the same kind of thing how it all went yeah like i mean like i was listening to detail so yeah pretty much exactly what was told by like gadget and uh crystal same thing like pretty much there's no details they mentioned that tyler would not have mentioned and nothing else he would have added okay um all right so with that you all get in the vehicles. Tyler, you get in with your mother, who is taking you there. Gadget, you're in with your father. Crystal, your mother takes you. 
Mm -hmm. You're assuming because your father doesn't want to be seen taking their kid into a police station. Uh, mm. You know, uh, with him running for office. I don't want any paparazzi <laughs> to catch it. Um, <laughs> and Izzy, uh, your father is taking you. <laughs> you all arrive to the police station. Roughly the same time, you pull up in your cars, you go inside. The main desk tells you to have a seat, and then shortly thereafter, this man walks out. Police officer Rennell Calhoun tells you four kids to stay there, and he calls all four parents off to the side, and they seem to be having some kind of conversation outside of earshot. And the parents are a little bit animated with their hands, and you're not really sure what they're saying. They're not getting upset, but they're clearly have a lot of questions and they're discussing something off to the side while the four of you sit in the lobby. A few minutes go by and then your parents then go off. All four of your parents go off around back and the four of you are just left there. About another minute goes by and then Officer Calhoun comes up to you all and says, all right children, Follow me. And he gets and he's leading you off. So you're following him? Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. He essentially takes you into a small room with a little table with the big bright lights up above. Essentially an interrogation room. And he gets the four of you just to go in there. And there's only one chair on each side of the table. So one person can sit. The three would have to stand up. I'll stand. Well, I sort of like looked at Izzy like she should sit. Mm. Is there like a mirror, like an obvious one way mirror type thing that you've seen in every cop movie? Uh, <laughs> I was about to say uh, exactly that. Yes, the one of the walls looks like a one way mirror, as well as there is a video camera, a big square white video camera up in the corner of the room. I'm just going to walk towards the one way mirror and kind of cup my hands around my eyes and try to look through it to see how really one way it is. <laughs> this is so cool. I've seen this in all the movies. Please have a seat. Uh, Rupert, is it? Gadget uh, is, is what people call me, and there's only one seat, sir. Please line up against the wall, Rupert. Clearly is, not entertained by your name, Gadget. Is he, is the officer in the room with us? Yes, or, he, he or, walked in oh. with you and shut the door behind. Okay, all right. So, four of you are in there, and he just goes to the other side, pulls out his chair, sits down. I have a long list of people to question today, so I'm going to bring in the four of you at once. I need not remind you children how serious this matter is, so you all need to tell the truth. And the whole truth, or else the law will come down on you so hard you won't enjoy the rest of your youth for as long as you live in this town. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get everyone to make a stress test because it's your first time in your life being interrogated by the police. <laughs> 2d6, please. For everyone. You're good. You're Just good. out of curiosity, we didn't, get, we didn't cure any more stress while we were at home, right? Uh, at all, before this. Um, it's not like you get one every hour, it's just during downtime. It's usually you have to be it's doing... It's I lose one every time I roll. <laughs> and... It's usually, I think it works in that you get one anytime you do something that you would find to be stress relieving. Now, I know Gadget said you were tinkering around with things, so uh, I'll let Gadget have one back. I'm not sure if anyone else did anything that they would consider. I didn't really do anything, so I don't think I would get one. That back. would be stress relieving. Yeah, same here. I would get one back. <clears throat> so would Gad a long, hot shower work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, so you basically would have got one back, and then it looks like you would have lost another one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But everybody else made it. Is holding it together. All right. Because I have failed every stress test that we have taken so far. 
<laughs> What's your stress at right now, out of curiosity? Well, four out of six at the moment, thanks to his generosity. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the fire at the shed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now he says, well, now I'm going to point to each of you to answer my question. But... When they're done speaking, if any of the other of you all have something to add, you can speak up. All right. Can you tell me what you were doing before you found Henry in the woods? And he points to Tyler. Um, beforehand, we had just left Jamboree Hill, and we went down to Gentlewood Creek. Um, we went into the woods with a Camilla to help her find her lost bracelet. Um, while we were there, uh, we saw some tracks and, uh, some blood in the snow. Uh, we decided to go follow the tracks, uh, in case Henry or Dennis, uh, were lost and hurt. Uh, and Camilla just went back to try and, uh, get some help. And he looks at the rest of you, if any of you have anything to add to that. So that's how you came across the area where the body was found, eh? Uh, yes, sir. Well, what was your immediate reaction when you saw the body? And he looks at Gadget. We tried to see where his injuries were. I tried to to look for some bandages in my book bag, but I, I spilled everything on the ground, so I stopped to pick it up. But they ran and tried to see if he was okay. Hmm. I didn't get much closer to the body, sir. Than the rest of you? Have you seen anything like that before? No, no never. I was very scared. Oh, it was like, like a lot of blood, and uh, we thought he was dead. Do you, any of you know anyone who may want to hurt Henry? Any no, bullies sir. at school, anything like that? I know nothing out of character. I know nothing came up last session. Is there anyone we know who would have any type of grudge? I'm guessing not. Nope. Not either. Okay. <laughs> all right. How well do you all know Henry? It, not well. Uh, is he in our grade? I yeah, he's in your class. Yeah, like, you know, he's in our class, but I mean, we don't hang out that often. I mean, it was a bunch of our classmates down by the creek. The, the whole school. Yeah. And then he asked you to go into more detail on the condition that the body was found when you saw it. So do you tell him everything in detail? Uh, yeah, because, I mean, I didn't get a good look at what type of mark. Like, I know he was bleeding heavily from his leg, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I'll sort of mention that, but I didn't get a good look at what type of wound it was. Um, and because then, you know, he just sort of, like came up and started choking me. Now what would have brought that on? Why I do you don't think, know. Like, uh, so you're saying this boy was injured in the woods. You thought he was dead. You approached him to try to help. He wakes up and he attacks you. Yeah, like, I don't know if he was just scared of something or he, he seemed... I don't know, he seemed off like I, I don't know I don't know what happened did you see anyone else in the woods before or after you found the body and had that encounter with him and he looks to you Izzy specifically I mean Camilla came in with us and they said there's a couple other kids around but we didn't see anybody and nobody we called out and nobody answered yeah it was Camila who uh, let me know about the four of you. Um, so that's what got you in there. She didn't have much to tell me, so I was hoping I could get some more info from you for. Now, were there any signs that you've seen of struggle or disturbance in the immediate area? And he looks at you, Crystal. Sir. I don't remember much. I've, I've never seen anything like that before. I. It was really scary. And he seems to be almost done. He's like, 
So this kid, he attacked you, and you defended yourselves? We just ran. Yeah, like, he he was choking me and Izzy, and uh, we had to just try and get away, and uh, we managed to hide, and he just ran deeper into the woods. Hmm. Okay, well... That's something to go on. He was making notes the whole time. And uh, he's like, well, is there anything else that you want to share with this incident that can help us find out uh, uh, where he's to or why he may have done such a thing? We brought the, the guy who ran the motorcycle, motorcycle ass to the <coughs> to the creek. We've showed him exactly where. I don't know if you've spoken to him. He was the only person we yeah. talked to. I already spoke with him. He showed me where he took the four of you. And, uh, yeah. It's kind of baffling. Well, if anything comes did up you, at school... Did you find him? We did not. Right now, he's treated as a missing person. And... Apparently, with violent tendencies, as you're saying. Uh, yeah, he, it looks like the was... trail led to the creek. If that boy went in that creek, we may never find him. Has, has anything like this happened before? Well, I mean, we've had people get lost in the woods many times. People fall into the creek when they shouldn't be walking on the ice, that kind of thing. Surely that kind of thing, but this is a little strange with your story with the injury and then him lashing out at you all and it seems like one set of footprints voluntarily going into the creek doesn't add up. Well, if anything comes up at school, if you hear anything else, please let me know. We need to find this child and get him home. Yes, sir. And with that, you can see the whole time he was kind of, you know, doing insight tests, basically, <laughs> on you to see if you were telling <laughs> the truth. But it seems like... Truth. Why? <laughs> yeah. It seemed like you were telling the truth the whole time. You guys didn't really hide much, right? No. Yeah. No. So, with that, you know, he didn't have to call you out on lying or anything. Uh, <clears throat> and you seemed pretty believable. I know, like, I, I did a bit the part where I smacked him upside the head with a wood and, like, scraped off some skin. But, I mean, like, that's neither here nor there. I did say I defended myself. <laughs> a technicality, yeah. Um, all right. All right, so, essentially, you're all done at the police station. You, Your parents are there. They grab you. You get back in the car. And they're kind of talking to you about it on the way home, kind of, you know, shocked that you had to go through such an ordeal. And the same as the police officer and yourself, kind of baffled why a kid would attack you. So your parents are asking all kinds of questions like, are you bullying him at school? Or, you know, why would he lash out at you kind of thing, right? So just a whole lot of questions from the parents and yourselves, a whole lot of confusion. Um, you make your way home. Um, and is there anything anybody wants to do tonight before we pass this day? I don't have the knowledge that Crystal has, so I'm going to call Dennis. I told him I'd give him an answer about the dance today or yesterday. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> at this point, it's probably about 8.30 at night. One of his parents, his mother, answers the phone. And says, uh, hello. G good evening, Miss Gruff. Um, my name is Izzy. I was wondering if, if Dennis is available to speak on the phone? Izzy, you say? Yes, ma'am. Mm, sure. <laughs> she, <laughs> you just hear a muffled <laughs> phone, and then, uh, you hear a bit of muffling in the background, and <laughs> give me the phone. No, I'm picking it up in my room. No. <laughs> and then there's like you gotta wait a minute but then sure enough I got it hang up and then click ah hello 
Hi, is this Dennis? Yeah, this is Dennis. Is he, right? Uh, it is, yeah. I said I'd call you yesterday or today. I just wanted to get back to you. Oh, yeah. I thought you would tell me at school, but this is great. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, it's a crazy day today, but yeah, I mean, if you're still going, of course, and no one else wants to go with you, I'd really like to go with you. Oh, oh, that's totally, totally what I wanted to hear. All right. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be great. We're going to have good time. Uh, you know, you don't need to sweat it. We're just going to, it's going to, the whole class is going to be there. And I'm sure they're just gonna have some lame Christmas music on or whatever. But yeah, we'll just we'll just chill, you know. We'll have we'll have a good laugh, maybe a bit some dancing, you know. You yeah. ready for some dancing? Def. I cannot wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, any news from um, Crystal? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe she'll talk um, at school, but I just. I figured I wanted to call you and let you know. It's been such a weird day, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's weird. There's, I don't know, uh, rumors of things going on down there. It's like, yeah. I mean, what's going on there? I mean, yeah, I had a bunch of police asking me questions down at Jamboree Hill. It's about, you know, Henry got missing. I don't know what that's all about, but... It's a bit odd, but uh, yeah. yeah. Everybody's thinking I did something to him, but no, I'm telling yeah. you, I, I didn't see him. We went our yeah, separate ways. I got my own wood pile. That's it. Okay. Well, uh, my my parents are probably gonna want me to get off the phone. Right. Soon, right. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, yeah. I, I hope you have a good night. Yeah. You too. You too. Thanks for calling. Uh, I'll see you in school tomorrow. Recess time. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> Seems like he's waiting for you to hang up. <laughs> you hang up. No, you hang okay, up. Okay, bye. <laughs> and she hangs up right quick. <laughs> and you hang up. All right, everybody, let's get back to the photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> that pout. <laughs> Come on. He's dreamy. Um, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's dreamy indeed. All right. So, uh, yeah, you all get a good night's sleep. So, you regain all of your hit points and stress. It all comes back as long as you all get a good night's sleep. Which I assume you oh, all do. Burning the midnight oil, working on a project, thanks to Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else got it done on time. Show off. <laughs> This is the time of paper projects. We'll all be dropping it off tomorrow, <laughs> sir. <laughs> exactly. So you all go to sleep. You wake up and you head off to school. It's Thursday, December 15th. You need to bring your projects into school. And what you do? I kind of um, just get dad to bring mine in for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. After your morning math class, you find yourself in the English class with Miss Doyle and she seems uh, to be handing out a new assignment for you all to work on during this class as she finishes grading your letters to Santa. You all get to work and after a few minutes you see her. She kind of stands up with kind of a fuming expression on her face. Her cheeks reddened with frustration. And she says, Peter Gunman, with a harsh glare that none of you have really witnessed before. She's staring across at Peter. I know what they did to you it was rude and unacceptable. But what you wrote on your letter to Santa is both appalling and completely unacceptable. Young man, you're coming with me to the principal's office right now. And she crumples up Peter's letter and tosses it into the trash bin. She walks over, grips Peter by the wrist, and swiftly leads him out of the classroom. 
yelling back at the rest of you, The rest of you! Get back to your assignments! And she slams the door, and she's gone. I just want to know what was written on that letter. Maybe we had someone right? who's really sneaky. Oh, maybe we had someone who's really <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> With quick fingers. Yeah, I'm wondering how I can get out there and get it. Where is the pencil sharpener in relation to her desk? <laughs> it's usually attached to the edge of the chalkboard. When I was a kid, the bottom, you know, mm. that silver thing that you put the chalk on? At the yeah. bottom, you yeah, know, at yeah. the far yeah. end of that, it was kind of bolted onto there. Yeah. I always need to see them bolted onto the teacher's desk corner. Yeah, sometimes they were on the teacher's desk, you're right. Yeah, well, we'll say there's two. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of writing done in English class. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's two. One on the desk, and one on the chalkboard. I'm going to snap my pencil, use that as an excuse to go up there and attempt to slide a hand that out of there. Can I also crumple up a piece of paper so if she comes back, there'll be a piece of paper there? All right, you're doing a little switcheroo, eh? All right, so uh, (laughs) sure. Give me a test with advantage if you're trying to hide it from the rest of the class seeing you. Okay. I'm going to say you don't hide it from... Crystal or Tyler, because it seemed like both of them were like thinking of the same idea. <laughs> They're like looking at the trash, looking at you, looking at the trash. Do it. <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, excellent roll. It's a success. So, yeah, you can describe to me what you do. So I kind of just like, after she leaves, I like snap my pencil and I was like, ah, oh, I get up. I kind of like balled up the paper and just like hold it close but like out of view and then I pretend to like drop the pencil and at the same time like reach down with two hands one to put the paper in and take the other one out and then get my pencil and then sharpen it in the thing and then go back and sit down all right just like try and look embarrassed because you know dropping stuff is huge (laughs) yeah and with that you get back to it nobody seemed to have noticed it you're, everyone seems to be trying to work under assignment because once again, Miss Doyle's in a bad mood and they don't want to piss her off anymore. So they're diligently working on their assignment and you pocket the crumpled up letter for the time being. Um, with that, the bell rings and it's recess time. So what are you doing from there? You're all heading back outside again, I guess? Or what's the weather like outside? Yeah, it's a nice day. Can I slip Crystal the note? Because I know that I'm going to see Dennis, and I don't know if they want to see it right now. Yeah, of course, you can hand it to her as you're going out there, getting your recess out of the cafeteria, or your book bags, and you can hand it off to her for sure. Crystal, here you go. I think Dennis is going to come up and chat to me at recess. We talked about it last night. What? You talked about it last night? Yeah, I called him. I said we were going to tell them, like, yesterday or the day before yesterday, and we'd run out of time because we didn't see I forgot school. all about it. Oh, with everything going on. I know. Well, have fun. Okay. Well, I'm still going to see you guys. I just, in case you wanted to see this while you're there or, like, go away, I just don't, like, have it if you need it. Okay. I take the note. And I stick with Tyler and uh, Gadget. I kind of like open it with the two of them. I kind of read it. Okay. Um, I'm kind of doing this like away from like other students. Okay. And Izzy, so you're going off looking for Dennis? Not looking for him, but he said he was going to come see us. So if they're trying to do that, I'm going to make sure that like I intercept him before he intercepts them. Okay, I understand. So sure enough, you kind of head off to your uh, spot by your tree, kind of hang out after you got your snack. You're starting to snack there, and you have that little thing. And sure enough, you see him just stepping out of the main entrance, and he's looking around um, with his two best buds. <laughs> Jimmy and Victor, they're looking around and then they spot you and a big smile comes on his face and he motions to the two guys and they're headed in your direction. So, 
As you start to take the note out, Crystal, and look at it, and Izzy steps forward, you know, to meet the three of them. Um, are you going to read it here now? Yeah, I'm going to quickly scan it with Tyler and Gadget there. All right, you two hey, guys. How'd you get that? Um, Izzy. What? <laughs> She's quick. Here, read. So okay. I kind of hold it so we can all read it. All right, you read it. The first thing you notice about this letter is that there are several strange symbols drawn sporadically around the edges of the sheet. There are many spelling mistakes throughout the letter, but you're able to get through it. It says, Dear Satan, What do I want for Christmas? I wish that everyone in my class would pay for laughing at me. I want all of them to feel the pain, hurt, and loneliness that I have to feel every day coming to this school. They're all such horrible people. Wait, they're not people at all. They are like monsters. And monsters need to die so the world will be a better place. And it's signed at the bottom with the horrible spelling of Sincerely, followed by Peter Gunman. And there is a blood stain partially covering his signature. He spelled Santa wrong. He cut himself when he was writing this. I thought. No, I think, what, I think what, he had a nosebleed. Yeah, he no, had a nosebleed. No, no it wasn't a nosebleed. Was. It was. Oh. He hit his. He hit his tooth on the side tooth, of someone's yeah. head. Oh, yeah. tooth! Right. Okay. I was like, yeah. there was blood. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember blood dripped onto it. I remember that. Yes, it, I remember that. blood. Okay. Yeah, because he had oh. the gauze in his mouth from where he just had his tooth yeah. knocked out, and uh, yeah, while he was writing that, it would drip down. You remember? Yeah. Oh, this is awful. I can't believe he feels like this. You said there were weird symbols around the border. Mm -hmm. Several strange symbols just drawn randomly around the border of the letter. Um, hey, Gadget, do you think you can make something of this? And I kind of point out the symbols. I'll give him the, the letter. Best I can do is see if they match any kind of formulas or periodic table symbols that we saw in science class or, you know, biology okay. or things, you know. Could be Latin, I suppose, but I'm not really good at that. Anything, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look, though. Do I recognize okay. it? You look it over. Maybe nothing. And it is nothing scientific that you've ever seen. I'm sorry, it's, this doesn't have a root in science. I, I'm not familiar with it. Does it look? And I, Crystal wouldn't really know much about this. But because he says, Dear Satan, and she's wondering, is it a play on words? Or are they like satanic symbols? And she's thinking about what happened with Henry. Are you saying that out loud to everyone else? Or are you asking me? Um, no, I'm asking you as a GM. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that out loud to the other players. No, um, I'm, yeah, I'm asking you. Well, you're not overly familiar. I wouldn't yeah. say your character is very familiar with the occult or various <laughs> religions. Um, no. Nope. You know, they didn't really teach that in public school. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So he, but you know, may have seen like I don't know when. When did the Exorcist come out? Well, so I'm 13, so never mind. I doubt you sat through <laughs> the Exorcist. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm gonna say no. Like you just, do, I mean, you okay. can have you can have that theory in your head because you might have seen like a movie or a TV show or something. Okay. Uh, you're open to have that theory. It's just I'm not gonna give you a definitive answer on. That's yeah. fine. If, 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 if you say that I can have that theory, then I'm going to go with that. So what I will say to Tyler and Gadget is, so if you don't recognize these symbols, Gadget, and I know it says Santa. Oh, sorry, I know he wrote down Satan instead of Santa. And what's, what happened with Henry? Just really, really weird. What if there's something like, like satanic? I don't. I don't really know. It feels weird. I don't. I don't really like this. I don't know. What if there's something evil? 
the slaughter about what happened with Henry? What if it's connected? Just taking a look at the letter, because like Tyler sort of like taking this in with those symbols. This might be a bit hard to determine, um, and Tyler might not be the best for this, but um, do, do the symbols seem like they were drawn in in the same handwriting? as uh peter's or does it seem like a different handwriting Ooh. hmm um i'm gonna say it might know. be hard to tell but like yeah all right give me a standard test to see how good you can encrypt is the right word i'm not sure decrypt <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so effectively like you know and to see if this makes any sense i'm still gonna roll there is all like is this are these symbols something that it looks like peter intentionally drew on himself while he was writing everything else or is something that sort of went there after the fact it's sort of like trying to figure that out but uh let's just say no i didn't pass anyway you are unsure okay they all like yeah where it's his writing is very poor uh, and these are like symbols. It's kind of hard for you to tell. Cause yeah, I can't really get penmanship from like a symbol. Yeah, like if you get two different people okay. to draw a symbol, uh, yeah, then it you won't yep. be able to correlate it unless you're really good or you succeed okay. at your test. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So I just figured I'd take a crack at it, cause <clears throat> yeah, cause Tyler's thinking, and he'll sort of say this out loud, is that like you know. I can, I can understand him, like, writing all this in the moment, but, you know, these symbols, they, they seem like, I don't know, they seem less heat of the moment. Hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Kind of. Well, we all passed our papers in at the end of class. I mean, only our teacher had papers, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of the kids were making, this is to you, Eddie. Um, I know a lot of the kids are making fun of him during that day. Can I recall if Henry said anything like different? Like maybe he targeted Henry? Um, you're going to try to recall back to see if Henry had any specific fallouts with Peter. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to say. You do know that Henry was one of the kids laughing at Peter during the class uh, a couple days ago when he was misspelling. Other than that, you know they're not friends in any way. Uh, but you haven't seen much bullying outside of that. But you know, he's not necessarily kind to him if he was one of the louder kids laughing. Okay. But there were other kids who were very similar. Yeah, there was at least yeah. uh, six or seven kids that were okay. laughing out loud. Okay. Can we remember who those kids were? I know there's a lot going on, but just so we have an idea of like who are the potential top candidates to be targeted if this is the case. <laughs> who is the next on the hit list? It's yeah, hard. it's, it's hard, hard to write the kill list. I was like the, the kill bill list. <laughs> yeah, it's a little hard to recall because it, the way it all went it was down. A lot. Yeah. But all right, I'll get you to roll check to see how accurate it is. How how many I'll give you? Yeah. So there was a lot. It would be like, oh, you were sat next to this person and you noticed they were laughing a lot or something like that. Because I know, like, I scowled at a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. I kicked someone's chair when they were laughing, so I know we weren't <laughs> laughing. <Yeah. laughs> I noticed at least one person laughing. <laughs> All right, Tyler. Oh, my oh, my dice agree. <laughs> you knew Henry was laughing? Um, let's see who else. Jeremy Roop was lightly snickering. Um, Carrie Cohen, the one that looks like a pilot, <laughs> she she was <laughs> laughing. Is he one of the, is he one of the ones? It was at the creek. No, but he is he is he part of? Oh, okay, that's that guy. Okay, cool. <laughs> so who are you thinking? No, so who's the name? Who's who's the curly guy in the trio of guys that are trying to get with Izzy and 
Well, yeah. there's two curly guys. There's the blonde guy. There's Jimmy, who you're sort of going to Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy's the guy saying. you got. Okay, I knew it was a J. I just was yeah. like, All who right. was it? I'm going to okay. share yeah, the all. images of every kid <laughs> that was yeah. laughing. There's a lot of kids. <laughs> we don't see their kids. names, though, when you share the yeah okay well if you need to know one of the names jeremy root <laughs> is the uh, the kid he, with the brightly colored like the shirt hawaiian colored shirt button up shirt Hawaiian over there <laughs> carrie is the girl pilot too cool for school yeah. <laughs> henry you know henry um and victor <sighs> Oh, he was laughing too. He was laughing and oh, not cool. Yeah. Those are the main ones that you stand out that there was okay. other people snickering, but those are the main four. Okay. Okay. Well, Alright, so we're gonna hop over to Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. No, no problem. <laughs> Thank you for entertaining us. <laughs> well, it may, it would have made a difference on my decision about something, so it's all good. If Jimmy is a target, yeah, like if he was an ass, no. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. go ahead. I won't be able to go with him to the Christmas party on Saturday because exactly, he's an yeah. ass. I know. I have standards. <laughs> In our school for child models. Yes. <laughs> she phones for days. Kaja seems offended that he's the average looking kid in a school of hunks. That's true. Yeah. I'm not a hunky guy, but my dad yeah, works there, so I got it in. Or yeah, average means you're uggo. Oh, it's like Saved by the Bell. It's like, why is everyone so attractive? <laughs> <laughs> like not a not a pimple to be seen. <laughs> and uh Gadget's the screech Everyone character. Has so smooth <laughs> complexions for teenagers. I know. Yep. And like such pouty <laughs> pouty full lips. So yeah, if we can get over the <laughs> outstanding beauty of the teens in this school. Um, <laughs> maybe they all made a deal with the devil for their youth. And good That's looks. what happened. That's what it Everybody is. Everybody wrote their letters to Satan this year <laughs> for their good looks. Oh. Dear Satan. <laughs> oh man! All right. So oh, Izzy, darling. Dennis, leading the pack with his two friends trailing <laughs> behind, Didn't comes you? up. Izzy, you're looking hey. great today, Izzy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness! How was your snow day? I mean, other than crazy. Yeah, I'm still a bit upset that a bunch of people were pointing a finger at me. But other than that, you know, that's that's fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm over it now. Uh, whatever. Uh, I don't think that kid turned up yet either. He didn't show up to school today, so I guess they haven't found him. Anyways, enough about that. Uh, yeah, what a day. Hey, um, and uh, Jimmy steps forward and Victor. <clears throat> and they both kind of step forward and it's like, so, uh... Has Crystal uh, made up her mind yet? Or if not, that's cool. Um, I think she was still deciding, but um, she's... I just kind of look over. At what stage are they at with their... Oh, they're like <laughs> flailing their hands, talking about Satanism. <laughs> 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 and like, they're like, you just hear, periodic table, and... <laughs> <laughs> They must be working on something, but I I know that she's gonna get back to you guys. Like I, I am for sure that she's thinking about your offer, and you're all very very nice fellows. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. It's in two days. Um, don't really want to put any pressure on her, but she is just right over there, just with those two guns. Okay, well, you guys will be here for like. Oh, yeah, yeah, time. totally. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And then you so, just, as you walk away, you just hear like Victor say to, to Jimmy, and it's just like, man, she's totally gonna pick me. I mean, she's not gonna go for your blonde curls. Come on now. Looks like you got a perm. Shut up, man. And he punches him in the arm. Like, you shut up. <laughs> and, he's doing, and then uh, Dennis is just standing there smiling at you as, he, as you walk away. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
So I make my way over to their conversation and just be like, Hey! So, I think the guys are going to come over and chat if you, um, to find out the answer, unless you want to come over with me. Ugh. Or I can tell them to go away. It's fine. I just, like, roll my eyes and look over. <laughs> uh, are you... Okay. I'm going to roll a perception test at disadvantage to see if they see the eye roll. Oh. <laughs> oh, they do not. They are, those two are busy punching each other. Uh, you said yes to Dennis, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Okay. I mean, look at his cool red hair, honestly. <laughs> when she says that, I want to gauge, I want to see if there's any reaction from Tyler or Gadget. The minute you talk about this dating stuff, Gadget has... Toned you out completely. <laughs> you you just started talking about something that's completely on another planet, and it's no longer relevant. What about Tyler? Tyler is more or less just looking at the letter and still thinking. <laughs> Are you looking at the letter in a manner to try to like ignore th this whole relationship conversation, or? I just wonder, does she need an does she need an insight check? <laughs> uh, maybe a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> Gadget has taken out uh, his own notepad and has sketched the symbols in it. Yeah, well, like I mean, like it's nice that you're sort of working out like dates for like the Christmas party, but I mean, like we might have to consider it might be canceled since one of our classmates made a deal with the devil to kill everyone who laughed at him. What? <laughs> oh, we'll catch you up. Okay. Um, We're not 100% sure he just didn't misspell Santa. <laughs> Crystal's annoyed. <laughs> Alright, you look over now and both Victor and Jimmy... They're kind of like doing their nonchalant kind of just kind of look trying to look as cool as they can for you because they know you're looking over at them constantly looking over his shoulder at them so they're just trying to like act natural but you can clearly see they're also just trying to like put their best foot forward puffing their chest a little bit just waiting waiting is he I, I don't well, I think I could distract him if I just held up a mirror. I think he's probably need a little last. more time. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, I just feel, you know, if this is what you want to do, that's um, that's totally fine. That's totally fine, and I support that. It's just, it's not, it's not for me. Not right, not right now. I know I said maybe, but. Mm, no. That's okay. You're allowed to change your mind. I'll tell him. Don't worry. Thanks. And I go back to the letter. <laughs> Izzy, you head back over? They so, all... you know how all these crazy Christian women are always talking about how this new D&D &D Dungeons and Dragons thing is the, is the devil and, and all that? Maybe we should... Uh, talk to Christopher and show him these symbols and see if they're in any of his books. That's really smart. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you've got no other leads. Is Peter anywhere on the play playground? <laughs> you do see him. Peter, or do you mean Christopher? You mean uh, Christopher? No, no. I, uh, no, I mean Peter. Oh, Peter? Okay. No, you do not see Peter. Then yeah, only lead. Okay, well, let's uh, look for Christopher. Um, I think Christopher is normally like in the library during lunch or recess. I'll uh, call to Izzy. Hey, Izzy, you coming? Yeah, one second. <laughs> All right. So I. They're anxiously I, waiting for Izzy to come back over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is Izzy coming back over, or just going to ignore them and go with the group? No, I mean, I told them 
that I told her that I tell them that she just wasn't gonna take either of them. I think it's rude to just leave them. Be like, bye. So what I'll actually do is because now that Gadget has said that, um, if he and um, Tyler go on, then I'll actually step up with Izzy. Oh, okay. So the two of you are gonna approach the group of three guys. Yeah. All right. So you walk up to them, and they're like. You look over and Victor and both Jimmy come at the same time and are like, Hey Crystal, how you doing? Hey, you know, I'm flattered that you guys, you know, want to take me to um, the dance. But uh, you see, my dad has a thing and I just can't make it. Sorry, guys. Okay. Roll lying. For, <laughs> roll for your how well you are at lying. Oh man. I think you okay. have advantage. Like just as a reminder, you guys have cinematic moments if you ever just want to like crit on anything before the end of the session. Sure. I I can use a cinematic moment. Uh, yeah, I'll just be like, so yeah, my dad has this gala thing on the go and I gotta babysit my little brother. Um it just came up last minute just found out sorry oh. and you just see their expression kind of drop and then immediately victor just corrects it and it's just like yeah of course yeah you got to do what you got i understand i have family and i have things like that yeah no no problem like yeah okay well yeah and he seems to be surprisingly accepting it well uh jimmy <clears throat> is uh yeah well yeah no no problem um, all right. So who's next? Uh, yeah. And he just kind of looks over across the way at a group of girls and then immediately walks over to them. Yeah. Um, I look to Dennis and I'll say, you're going to take care of my girl. Oh, oh. And I kind of like leave it as a statement. <laughs> oh, no doubt. No doubt, I'm gonna take care. Yeah, yeah. So we're just gonna have and I'll on. do the, I'll do the because you know, don't mess with them because you're gonna mess with me. <laughs> okay, I gotta go, and I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow her and just be like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and he just gives you a wink, and then uh, quickly tries to catch up with Jimmy, uh, and him and. Dennis and Victor quickly try to catch up with Jimmy, who apparently is moving on very quickly, trying to find, oh, yeah. trying to find himself a date. <clears throat> oh yeah, teenage hormones. <laughs> <laughs> I got a problem to solve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well we'll wrap it up there for now. All right, everybody, the next episode will be here on the screen if it's available at this time. Otherwise, if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button, comment down below, let me know your thoughts on the adventure, share this with your friends if you want to help this channel grow, and as always, stay in the light.